Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Railway, which is one of the most ambitious projects, is taking shape to facilitate high speed rail transport for today's India. This project also represents a landmark partnership between India and Japan. The project is being implemented by the National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited. The 508 km long corridor will connect India's two megapolis, Mumbai and Ahmedabad. Mumbai, the economic capital of India, with densely populated urban areas, poses one of the key challenges. To connect to the city centre of Mumbai, this corridor needs to pass through India's longest tunnel of 21 kilometres, of which 7 kilometres will be undersea. To preserve the delicate urban and environmental ecosystem of Mumbai city and the Thane Creek. Rights Limited, one of the pioneer infrastructure engineering consultancy companies, has been entrusted to execute the final location survey and geotechnical investigations to facilitate design of various structures. At Thane Creek, the geophysicist's objective is to find a competent rock layer beneath the earth, which could be suitable to construct a tunnel for the bullet train. Let's now understand with the help of a 3D animation how the seismic refraction technology enables a geophysicist to understand the characteristics of Earth's subsurface. To map the Earth's subsurface, the geophysicist uses a technology called Seismic Refraction Survey. As we all know, the Earth's subsurface is composed of a number of layers with different types of rocks, having different properties of hardness, density and porosity. The purpose of the seismic refraction test is to find a strong and enduring medium of rock layer with little or no fractures, fissures or low porosity so that the engineer can avoid poor strata and water ingress during construction and subsequently during its operations. To conduct an SRT for the undersea tunnel, we require a fleet of a minimum of three ships. This fleet comprises an acquisition ship installed with data recording seismograph, an air gun ship used for creating seismic energy and a ship for laying the streamer cables. The cable laying ship lays the streamer cable fitted with hydrophones, which are essentially highly sensitive microphones designed to be used underwater for recording or listening to underwater sound signals on the seabed over the proposed alignment with navigation positions controlled through GPS. The end of the streamer cable is connected with the seismograph installed in the acquisition ship. The air gun ship is also equipped with a GPS navigation system to precisely control the shooting locations and time of the air gun which uses compressed nitrogen gas to produce a high-frequency seismic pulse. An air gun shot is fired at each hydrophone, which are installed at every 10 meters on the streamer cable. The seismic energy created by the air gun travels beneath the earth, penetrating through different layers of the earth's subsurface and returns back after refraction by various rock layers. The series of hydrophones capture the travel time of each refracted seismic pulse through various materials. As different materials have different properties, the seismic wave will take less time traveling through more solid rock material compared to loose, porous or fractured rock mass. The seismic pulses captured by the hydrophones are transmitted to the seismograph in the acquisition ship through streamer cables. The raw data is processed further using various softwares to filter unwanted pulses and create a 2D tomography as well as a 3D sectional map of the Earth's subsurface. The 3D cross sections clearly show different layers of rock based on their characteristics. Now, based on the processed data, geophysicists can identify suitable rock layers to take the tunnel through. Let's see how the SRT survey was carried out at the Thane Creek. Here are the equipments used in the survey. Streamer cable with hydrophones mounted at every 10 meter interval. These can record sound signals of 2 Hz to 20 kHz frequency refracted from various layers. One streamer cable of 600 meter length, which carries 60 hydrophones at 10 meter interval as sensors. Two such cables were used to make a 1200 meter cable in one line. 
the cable ship lays these cables with hydrophones on the seabed with locations carefully controlled by GPS. The ends of the two streamer cables are connected to 150 meter trunk lines which are connected to a seismograph located in the acquisition ship. A Bolt 600 air gun with maximum capacity of 50 megapascals is used as a seismic source. The system is integrated with a simulator, oscilloscope and remote trigger system with encoder and decoder with advanced information and communications infrastructure. The air gun is lowered into water, placing it as close as possible to the streamer cable. The position of the air gun during each shot is also recorded with GPS. An air gun shot is fired at each hydrophone location and seismic signals at every channel recorded. After each shot, the air gun is automatically charged to produce another shot. The time between charging of air gun and movement of the ship to the next location is synchronized with the software controlled system. The trigger signal generated by the air gun is transmitted through an encoder placed in the air gun ship to a decoder placed in the acquisition ship. A delay of 5 milliseconds is programmed for synchronizing the encoder and decoder before the recording of the seismic signal. The geophysicist on board the service ship monitors and controls the quality and accuracy of the data signals being received. For accurate determination of seabed profile and for processing of seismic data acquired along the survey lines in the seabed, a bathymetric survey has been carried out along the seismic lines prior to seismic data acquisition. At the data processing center, the raw seismic data is corrected for tidal and bathymetric effects prior to processing and modeling. Data processing includes data alignment, shot gathering, sea bottom level calculation for each hydrophone along all the seismic lines and tidal corrections for seismic data with respect to mean sea level along all seismic lines. All the data is processed using KGE's in-house modeling software for analyzing 2D seismic refraction data, for picking up first and later arrival times, for analyzing 2D seismic refraction tomography, as well as for 3D visualization of refraction sections. 2D seismic sections have been correlated with geological sections for interpretation. From the 3D visualization, it was clearly identified that the thickness of the sediments with poor rock mass condition is more on the western side of the creek, whereas on the eastern end, bedrock is available at shallower depths. The SRT survey has provided a continuous subsurface information, giving detailed insights into lithological variations longitudinally, transversely and vertically. A key challenge for any undersea tunnel investigation lies in understanding and measuring tidal fluctuations. For this purpose, we made use of automatic tide gauge observations recorded in Vasi Bridge area by Mumbai Maritime Board. Our tide gauges were calibrated with respect to this gauge and the available tide prediction data to calculate day-to-day -day tidal fluctuations. This along with bathymetric data, was used for processing the seismic data. The output of the survey has provided continuous subsurface information, which will be used for safe design and smooth construction of the undersea tunnel.